Hey, what is up guys? Mike back with another video and today we're going to upgrade our old editing PC. What I'm going to do is I found this uh, Gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti. It's the uh, OC edition. It's got 4 gigs of GDDR5. got 768 CUDA cores. It's got a clock speed of 1366. Boost clock of 1480 megahertz. We're going to install the GPU, install the AIO and I'm going to quickly show you exactly how to do that. Now, hold your horses. Now, before you go ramming home that shiny new GPU, you head over to Guru3D, download DDU. DDU will uninstall any previous GPU drivers ready for your new card. Now, I won't go into details, but I will hit you up with a link in the video description on a tutorial on how to use it. Now, one thing to mention about this Gigabyte WinForce edition of the 1050 Ti, it does require a 6-pin PCI connector to power the actual card. Now, this does have HDMI ports, four of them in fact, so make sure you have a spare one on your PSU. Now one other thing worthy of noting is that I did look at the EVGA version of the 1050 Ti and that one didn't have a backplate, I decided to go with Gigabyte's offering as I quite like the uh, backplate design on this card. Now one thing you should do always is to wear an anti-static wrist strap. If you haven't got one, rub your hands on your PC case like I've just done. Now what you want to do is remove the thumb screw thus retaining the GPU in place to the case. And that should just come out pretty simple. And then if you haven't got a retention clip on your motherboard on that 16x PCI slot, then your card should just pull out like so. And there we go. So once that's removed, eBay this card, it's got to be worth about £25-30, it's the R7250 OC. One other thing to note about this card is that the fact that it's a dual slot card, so you will have to remove two expansion slots on the back of your PC case. Now locate your card into the 16x slot, the 16x slot should always be the closest one to the top of the motherboard like so. Uh, once your card is firmly in place you will hear a click. Once this is all done, relocate the thumb screw to secure the card. Going round to the back of your PC case, locate the uh, 6 pin power connector. So the one that I've got on this PSU is a 6 plus 2. Route it through to the front of your uh, case and locate it into the GPU like so until you hear it click. Now on to the second part of our upgrade, we're going to install our Deepcool 120K AIO. Now this model here has a good airflow rate of about 61 CFM and it has a lifespan of 120,000 hours and it's available for under £50 on Amazon UK. Remove the old CPU cooler and now you want to clean off this CPU using some alcohol and some Q-tip like this. When it's all clean, you're ready to install your AIO. First time users or first time installers of an all-in-one liquid cooler, I strongly suggest that you read the instruction guides for your appropriate socket, be it Intel or AMD. Now first what you want to do is remove the shroud around the CPU socket. This can be done quite easily by removing the four screws like so. Once we've done that, we can remove the actual retention bracket that you can see coming off right now. Now with the retention bracket removed, Turn your case round and you'll see a metal bracket on the back of the motherboard. Carefully remove that and be sure to store that in your old motherboard box or somewhere safe if you ever need to put it back on. Now while a lot of this might look really complicated, it's not. The bags are currently labelled with either AMD socket types or Intel socket types. There's uh, brackets to fit pretty much any socket type that you can actually imagine. So find the bracket that says AMD or AMD socket appropriate to you, gather all the parts into a nice pile so you know exactly what you need to do the next part. Now, what we need is this screw. It's got a flat head, solid steel, and a small bit of thread. Now, this is a screw that you will need for, doesn't matter if you've got AMD or Intel, you need to find four of those. Now we need to take the big bracket. Now as you can see that this bracket is located Intel and AMD. And as you can see I've slotted one of these screws through and I've put the uh, plastic retention cap over the top and that's what you need to do to all four corners. One little tip, when you drop the screw into a hole and you try and put the plastic cover over the top and it doesn't fit, what you need to remember is when the screw goes in it needs to be jiggled a little bit until it sits flush against the steel bracket then the plastic housing will fit nice and easy. Not long now, now we need two U-shaped brackets. As you can see, I've already installed one. The other one goes at the bottom, so when the CPU cooler is installed, you'll be held on together from the top and the bottom, not left and right, because that will be wrong and you'll get really annoyed that you've done this. So be sure to do this step exactly as I'm doing it now. So the tubes 
Uh, this bit really is fiddly. If I'm honest, this took me quite a while. It took me about 15 minutes because these little screws, as you can see on the table, they're tiny. Get somebody to hold, use a magnetic screwdriver, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Install that one, and then we're ready to mount. Now, inside one of the packs, you'll find screws like this. Now, these are used to mount your 120mm fan to your 120mm rad. Be sure to check the orientation of the airflow. Now, there will be an arrow somewhere located on the edge of the fan that tells you which way you want to mount it. Now, I want it to go through the back of my PC, not up. So, I'm going to orientate my fan so it goes out the back of the PC case. Tighten the four screws on each corner and you're ready to install. Now, no... Now, I haven't forgot to install thermal paste. The actual cooler comes with a nice layer of thermal paste already applied. If you don't want that and you want to use something like Arctic Silver, be sure to remove that and put your own Arctic Silver on. Spread it out nice and evenly and then locate it to make sure everything fits nice and tight. And then you can get the four thumb screws. Now, these are big, chunky thumb screws. Um, you can't really miss them. Let me show you what one looks like. Now this is a part that you don't want to lose, there's only four of these, if you lose it you're screwed. As I said before, work from corner to corner and don't tighten all the thumb screws fully until all four thumb screws are in place and then slowly micro adjust until the uh, CPU cooler is fully secure. Now connect the four pin connector from the actual cooler to the motherboard header for this CPU and one to a PWM slot on your motherboard. Unless for whatever reason you don't have an internet connection, you should never install the enclosed CD drivers. Head up to NVIDIA's website, fill in the uh, little specs drop downs here as you can see, and make sure you select the certified recommended ones. And if you scroll down after you've inputted everything, you'll have the latest driver for that specific card. So go ahead and download and install, and then we're going to run some benchmarks. Now I'm running 3D Mark Skydiver. As you can see, I'm recording my screen. Now I'm going to switch over to the NVIDIA game record. So here we go. So as you can see in the Skydiver test, it scored 15,457 and it averaged on the graphics test 114 FPS. 
and then for my second test I decided to run it through Cinebench so I'm running it on both OpenGL and CPU tests as you can see it can still run the test pretty well and I've sped this video up just to uh, save everybody a little bit of time so it scored in OpenGL 77.34 FPS and as a CPU score it was 419 and lastly my last test involved core temp now the pc has been running for over two hours without stopping i have been using sony vegas for about an hour and while i've been running these tests as well now this system used to run on the uh, stock cooler that came with the 6300 at around 34 degrees and now as you can see even while running sony vegas having background apps open and running some benchmarks if I can focus in on this it's got a minimum of 15 and current uh, CPU temp is fluctuating between 20 and 18. On the whole the system never goes above like the 30 mark now so it used to be around the 36 to the sometimes it hit a 40 but you know what it's pretty good now and I'm really happy with it so be sure to check out the following video where we overclock until then I'll see you next time.